Hi everyone, Vega here. In today's video we're going to be looking at the next in our brightest star series, Vega, the standard bearer. So let's get to it. So first of all, where is Vega? Well first of all it's in the, in the constellation of Lyra. Lyra of course is, depicts the Lyra of Orpheus, a Greek style harp given to Apollo as a gift. And here we can see in the top right hand corner is, is Vega, the brightest star of Lyra. How might we find that in the night sky? Perhaps the best way is, is if we find a summer triangle with Deneb and Altair, or alternatively we could find Cassiopeia and we, if we see the W shape, the two last stars point upwards towards Vega. But again, it's not, not that easy a star to find also known of course as Alpha Lyrae. So what type of star is Vega? Uh, let's have a look at its spectral class. Vega of course is an A-class subgiant um, and many argue it's the most important star after the Sun with 2.135 solar masses. The reason for this is, is Vega has always been used as the baseline for calibrating photometric brightness um, and indeed should have roughly a magnitude of zero. In other words, all stars are based on, on the brightness of Vega, which is why it's known as the standard bearer. So how about the relative size of Vega? Well, first of all, we've got our own sun, um, a relatively dark star from the Vega system of only 4.3 magnitudes, so it's not very powerful in comparison. A very similar star to Vega, of course, is Sirius. Sirius has a radius of 1.71 solar masses, whereas Vega is slightly bigger at 2.362. And this odd looking shape is because it spins very fast, uh, creating this, this bulge we can see in, in the mid ranges of the star. Uh, Vega also has a very low metallicity of only 32% of the sun, which is why it differs from Sirius and otherwise very similar stars both A-class subgiants, um, whereas Sirius actually three times the metallicity of the Sun, so very different on that scale. Now uh, let's uh, have a look at Vega in terms of where it is. It's 25.5 or light years away. Indeed it's it's coming towards us. Uh, Vega is closest approach and if you can survive the next 264,000 years will be 13.2 light years. So its luminosity at present is 40, but obviously will increase by then to become one of the very brightest stars of all in our skies. At, at present, we can see Vega, the 12th brightest object in, in the sky, or fifth brightest star, sixth, of course, if we include the sun itself. Um, so we've got Sirius through Canopus, Alpha Centauri and Arcturus, and after that, of course, there's Vega. Now, as we like to do on these videos, let's make things a little bit more interesting. Let's imagine that Vega and the Sun somehow spontaneously became a binary system. Vega joins the Sun. Now, Vega would straight away become the brightest star in our sky at minus 30, almost minus 31 magnitude, so uh, at least 16 times brighter than our own Sun. Uh, and how we might imagine that look. Um, so of course here's the Sydney Australia with a beautiful um, opera building. We can see in a normal day here under our own sun. Now if we look on in the top right hand corner here let's imagine that Spega suddenly appeared in our skies. And we can see outshining the sun by vast amounts. Uh, burning the, the St Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Opera House into a crisp. Now you might wonder how is Vega's habitable zone and we can see here that obviously with them being much more powerful and brighter star than our own sun it pushes the habitable zone out here after the Mar Mars and just to around the Jupiter system and at the very outer limits. Uh, you might ask yourself the question, would that make the Galilean moons and certainly Ceres, the, the dwarf planet in, in the asteroid belt, habitable uh, with flowing water 
Certainly moons like Callisto and like Ganymede, Europa would likely have oceans flowing on their surfaces. So let's continue with the imagination though that the Vega and Sun was a binary system. Now what we're going to do is we're going to imagine this is a view of Pluto here uh, and imagine somehow we could somehow spontaneously grab a beautiful city of Kuala Lumpur from Malaysia with its twin Patronus towers and put it on the surface of Pluto so if it was if there was no vega in the sky of course Kuala Lumpur frozen a frozen wasteland of, of ice and snow now imagine vega was to become in the binary system with the sun this is something like what we might see Pluto warming up its atmosphere then becoming denser water beginning to flow perhaps on its surface at, at the very warmest uh, equator places locations Kuala Lumpur coming back to life so let's continue with our analogy let's take Vega and move it out now from where it's placed in the, in the center of the solar system and move it out towards the Oort cloud at 10,000 astronomical units that's roughly one sixth of a, of a light year so what would Vega look like now if, if it was at 10,000 astronomical unit so imagine Vega at 10,000 astronomical units imagine in prehistoric times this is what they might have seen the Sun Stonehenge being built back then of course and then wait just imagine Vega suddenly appears at 10,000 astronomical units there we are at a magnitude minus 10 so not quite as bright as the full moon but imagine remember that this is one sixth of a light year distance by far and away the brightest other star in our sky apart from the sun and vastly vastly outshining venus the next brightest so only the moon and the sun at this point would replace vega at the top of the list uh, vega itself has it has a family system um, it's indeed it's got a when we look at Vega in the sky we're looking actually looking at its poles and that means we can see the, the disk and it does have its own Oort cloud clumpy material quite famous for the strange materials in the, in the disk of, of the Vega planetary system but there is a hypothesis it's not confirmed yet that there is a Neptune like planet orbiting around 65 astronomical units so quite a long way out certainly outside of the habitable zone but this does allow for rocky worlds closer in to in the Vega system. So we might imagine a Mars or a Mercury um, slowly developing as, as Vega is actually only one tenth the age of the Sun. So perhaps an Earth slowly developing in, into life, uh, developing an oxygen atmosphere um, right now in the Vega system. However, I don't think that we're going to be visiting it anytime soon. Vega, of course, at its 25 light years distance, actually is 240 trillion kilometers away. So, unless we some substantially improve the speeds of our uh, space navigation equipment and probes, we're not visiting anytime soon, unfortunately. Thanks for watching. Um, please stay tuned for further videos. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe and, and add a like if you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.